throughout the year. So it's not like I just started, I was fluent from 12 or 13. It's not like at 13, mm-hmm. I became fluent where I'm at now. It's like, it took years to develop the language skills, but to get a native speaker to really think that I was from her country, I was just say that's fluent to be where she think I'm lying. And I'm not lying. Like, this is the funny part about it. You have Buenos Aires people from there. People from Buenos Aires, the city. You have people from other parts of Argentina. You have people from other Spanish-speaking countries. Then you have people from non-Spanish-speaking countries. Quiero darte la bienvenida. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm really excited to hear about your language learning journey. Great. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Joshua. Can you just start just sharing a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? And how many languages do you speak? Um, so uh, my name is Ajami. I'm from the Chicago area. Um, actually, right now, I speak English, Spanish, Portuguese. English, my native language, Spanish and Portuguese, my second and third languages. And uh, right now learning French on the side. So what started this whole journey of yours? Actually, one one question before that. Okay, so you grew up speaking English, correct? Were there yeah. any other languages that were spoken in your household? So technically, no. Um, but I started a long time ago. Maybe when I was four or five, my mom bought me these books, one in Spanish, one in French. And it was um, it was for little kids. So it, really, it was weird at the time because the book was maybe 10 to 20 pages. So when I finished the book, I'm like, I don't I still don't know the language. I just knew maybe how to say one to 10 ABC. I did my ABCs in Spanish. And at that time, when the book was published, it was I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Spanish. They had an older um, alphabet, which included the CH, the NA, the RR and the LL. So I knew that alphabet before they changed it. So to answer your question, we all, we always spoke English in my household, but um, I was familiar with Spanish and French basics at a young age, at the age I would say four or five. So how did that uh, journey evolve, evolve then? Yeah, so um, my aunt actually speaks Spanish. Um, she learned it through school and she, high school, college, she took classes. So my mom was always like, oh, your aunt speaks Spanish. I'm like, okay, that's cool. And I don't know if anyone has ever been to Chicago or a big city. There's so many different people that from different countries speaking different languages. And we would visit my grandmother, um, like in the downtown area, right by UIC, which is the University of Illinois, Chicago. And in her apartment building, there's people from different places, from Poland, from India. And I would just hear people speaking different languages. And maybe at six or seven years old, I thought, wow, that's so cool. Um, and so to fast forward with the Spanish, like I said, my aunt knows Spanish, knew Sp- knew Spanish, and I would, I think I would call her and ask her, oh, what does this mean? What does that mean? And I think she might have gotten tired of answering for me. So when we we're t- when I was 12 years old, um, we went to the library, we went to a bookstore and we bought this uh, course. It was cassettes, four cassettes, one book. It was Barron's. I don't know if you've heard of that company. Oh, I and it, yeah, it's called... Uh, so the book was how to learn Spanish fast and fun in 10 minutes a day. And they have Spanish, French, German, Italian, I think. And I had the Spanish one. It was maybe $30. I don't know how much she paid for it. And now the only negative with that was that it, it taught me all present tense. So I was able to learn Spanish, but then all present tense. So, so yeah, so that was at 12 years old. So I, I usually say I officially started learning Spanish at 12, which was a, while, a long time ago. Okay. Then do you take any like additional classes in school, like in high school or in college or anything like that? Yeah, I did. So. With that being said, so I started at 12 on my own, but then in middle school, we had six months, seventh and eighth grade. And then high school, I said, okay, I really want to learn this language because um, there's a lot of Latinos um, where I live. So I always ask people like, how long did it take you to learn English? They would say, oh, it took me a year just watching TV. So I kind of got on the immersion track before people talk. This was before the internet. You know, I graduated high school in 2004. So this was back in maybe like 1998, 1999. People were saying, just watch TV for an hour. So I watched, so I had this, so I was watching Univision. I didn't even know. At that time, it's just like, oh, it's a Spanish channel. You don't know the the name of it or anything. (laughs) So I'm just watching Univision. I watched this one show. It's called Soñadoras. And it was about these high school girls in Mexico with drama. And it was crazy. I was in eighth grade, I remember. The only things I understood was blah, 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 see, blah, 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 blah. No, that's it <laughs> for the longest time. But in high school, to go back to your question, I took four years of Spanish and I got better each and every year. Um, And yeah, throughout the year. So it's not like I just started, I was fluent from 12 or 13. It's not like at 13, mm-hmm. I became fluent where I'm at now. It's like it took years to develop the language skills. So um, to finish that high school question, when I was a senior, we went to there was a senior trip to go to Spain for, uh, wow. for just for a week, just to a tour, tour different cities and stuff. And so I got the opportunity to hear Spanish and, you know, with with 
it was with my classmates and three teachers were chaperones. So we went to Spain, the, uh, the north of Spain, so Madrid, Salamanca, San Sebastian, and Barcelona. And so I got to hear Spanish. That's the first time I ever learned about Equatorial Guinea, which is the only Spanish-speaking country in Africa. I didn't know it existed, even though I took Spanish in high school. So yeah, so because we're walking down, I remember I was walking in Madrid, walking down a, uh, La Calle, walking down the street and I heard them they're playing Tupac I'm like they're playing Tupac in Madrid and so I go into the store and uh I see this one uh black guy then I see the one white guy and I asked the black guy I said where are you from he said oh, Equatorial Guinea I'm like Guinea he's like Guinea Equatorial I'm like I never heard of that where's that he's like Africa I'm like what so it was weird but I learned and so you learn little by little so yeah do they have a lot of those types of actually no first was that uh was that trip for a Spanish class or was just like a like a senior trip in general yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was like, it wasn't for a class per se, but it wasn't like a senior, all seniors going. It was basically like, if you're interested, here's a trip and we do it to Spain every year. Um, The wow. only, do, only year they didn't do it was my sophomore year because of 9-11, but then after that junior and senior year, and I and I knew I wanted to go. So um, thank my parents for paying for the trip. So um, yeah, so, I, and that trip, it, it, it was just so fun. It was my first time outside the country. And it was a unique experience because, you know, as Americans, we always hear that, oh, foreigners want to come to the United States. And then, but I saw foreigners in Spain, you know, when I, we went to the ice cream shop, ice cream store, however you said in English, and there was this other Afro Ecuadorian girl there. I didn't even know it, it, it tripped me out because I'm 17 years old and she's serving me. I said, where are you from? She said, Ecuador. I'm like, you do, I'm like, do you speak English? She said, no. I'm like, and then I, and it was so bad. I had to ask her again, like, are you? you speak English? She's like, no, I'm like, okay. It's just, it's just weird. So, but, um, so you see people from everywhere. And so that was another um, level of, of my language. So, I mean, I didn't get fluent from that part, but that's, that's part of my language skills. What would you say your, your Spanish level was, was at that point during that? I trip? Thought, yeah. If you would have asked me, because <laughs> in my senior year, they called me in the class, they called me like the dictionary like the only classes i liked in school were spanish and gym that's it i didn't really like math math was my worst and then english was okay and history was cool social studies was cool but spanish i was on it like i know this i know that but i felt like it wasn't it wasn't fluent to where it is now obviously years later and so my level was probably i would say high intermediate i could talk like i said i knew the present tense i knew the present tense i knew the past tense but it wasn't where i felt like oh yeah i can basically pass as a native or just use it just when, however I want to use it, but I'm glad I got to go on a trip. I, I'm glad I got that opportunity. So yeah. To hear kind of how, how Spanish is spoken in a Spanish speaking country, just and be surrounded by it. Yeah. And uh, I think the biggest thing, you know, I had a friend from Argentina back when I was in eighth grade and uh, I would go to his house. And another weird thing was that his parents would just talk to him in Spanish and they would just talk to him and his sisters in Spanish and I would talk to him in English, and it's just like I'm just hearing Spanish from a different accent. So like even then, like I didn't know there was different different accents. They don't teach you that in school. So mm -hmm. I learned that in eighth grade. So so yeah. Yeah. So how many different Spanish speaking countries were you surrounded by growing up in Chicago? As far as the native speakers? Yes. Yeah. Like the, the different you know uh, Spanish speakers from different Spanish speaking countries. Like you know what what countries were they all from? Yeah, I think the remember. number one is Mexico, and then uh, like my, like I said, my friend from Argentina, my classmate from Argentina. And that's about it. Um, there were some people from Puerto Rico, but I still didn't know the difference. And then mm -hmm. um, that's about it um, at that time. And were you able to distinguish between like the different accents a little bit once you started to you know learn or like hear them speak Spanish more with their family or, or with you? Once I got better, because when I started um, my uh, I remember I was in gym class in eighth grade and these girls from Mexico, they said, you speak sp better Spanish than him. And they were talking about the guy from Argentina. I was like, how do I speak better Spanish than him? I just know basic stuff and then I got to see oh he speaks he says this it's the she god instead of be a god I'm like okay so so I'm learning little by little so it was it, it, it wasn't like it was it wasn't like it was something that I fully comprehended at the beginning but then yeah. as you now people little by little you're like oh you say this and you say boss or bo and they say tu but yeah so but now around where I live there's a lot of people from Honduras Central America Salvador also and yeah. then after high school, how did your your language learning journey evolve? Yeah. So in that time in high school, when I was 17, my Spanish was pretty good and I wanted to learn a second language. So I said, you know what? Um, I saw the World Cup. Brazil was playing. And I said, you know what? 
maybe I could go to Brazil one day, pass as a Brazilian and learn, learn Portuguese. You know, I've always heard Portuguese close to Spanish and I had never heard Portuguese. Mm -hmm. So I went to a Borders bookstore, as we all know, it's closed down. Borders bookstore does not exist. So I went there with my own money this time. I was already 17, had a, a job, went to the language section, which was a small section. Then the Portuguese section was a smaller section. It had something similar. It had a, it had a course, four CDs and a book, but it was Portuguese. But the caveat was it was, they call it continental Portuguese, which means Portuguese spoken in Portugal and Angola and other African countries. So they said, this is not Brazilian Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese is different. So I said, you know, I don't care. It was $30. So I still paid for it. And that's what started my Portuguese journey. But obviously I wasn't fluent in a day, but when I first heard it, I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. I, I like this language. And I think with Portuguese, it's just like, it was like an immediate, like, wow, it was like attraction for the language because it was the thing about it is so close to Spanish, but it's just different. So, mm -hmm. so that's what started my Portuguese learning uh, lessons. Yeah, yeah, it does sound similar at the same time. Like for me, it always confuses me. Like I'm like, is that Spanish? <laughs> is that Portuguese? I have no idea. It's weird. It's one reason why I don't even want to learn it, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know if I can actually keep those separate. It seems like some of the words are just two letters, but like switched around. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, why you got to do this for? Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's it's fun. I had the opportunity. I was in Portugal last year for a week uh, with my brothers and wow. I got to speak Portugal, Portuguese there um, because obviously that was years ago that I started learning Portuguese. So, so yeah. I had a similar experience to you, uh, I think either a year ago, two years ago where I met uh, a woman from, or two women from Angola, and they were speaking Spanish to me. I was like, wait, wait, where are you from again? Angola? I'm like, they speak Spanish there? I was like, oh, no, oh, no, uh, Portuguese. Well, uh -huh. they speak Spanish to me, and then I then they told me that, oh, yeah, we, like, our native language is Portuguese. I'm like, oh, really? So they spoke well, three languages at that point. Yeah, like, yeah. Wow, that blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very unique um, to have the opportunity to speak with different people and just, we don't realize it, you know, but... It's just it, it, it's, it's just fun for language learners like us to to come in contact with other people. Then they have those moments like, oh, how did you know? How are, why are you learning our language? I mean, so, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't even know that there like how many, you know, Portuguese speaking countries that there were. So mm -hmm. just that just kind of shows like my knowledge is very, very limited when it comes to the Portuguese <laughs> language. But did you find it difficult to learn Spanish and Portuguese at the same time? Um, I would say no. So. When I was 17, that was like my fifth year of Spanish. And then my first real job, I had to play my mom for this. You know, we love our mothers, but she wanted me to work, obviously, over the summer since, you know, can't just stay at home learning languages all the time. But it helped me out. My first real job was at a fast food restaurant. And uh, guess what? Most of the people spoke Spanish that were cooking and I was cooking. So I had the opportunity to be around Spanish 24-7 that summer. And um, that I think that really helped me learn a lot more like wow you know i can really speak it and then i remember my boss was like i remember i told him like oh yeah i speak spanish and my boss he said oh can you come in for like a like a like to interpret something so i did like my first ever interpreting when i was like 17 and i know i made some mistake but i'm like make some mistakes but i'm like wow that's cool you know and so it kind of like boosted my confidence at that young age and so to answer your question with regard to learning portuguese it wasn't tough because my spanish even if I make my, make mistakes today, I may make some mistakes today speaking Spanish, but I have like a foundation, like the, a base foundation that can't be taken away. Like I know, I know the numbers one through a hundred like that, A through Z like that, you know, certain things like, and that's one of the things that I like to tell people, you know, you have to do the repetition, get that base and then mm -hmm. it can't be taken away. And for me with Portuguese, especially from like continental Portuguese, like from Portugal, it's so, the base is so similar to Spanish that it's just like, you just have to just trick your mind to thinking okay this is spanish but it's just a little bit different so it's not like i was learning from zero it's not like i yeah. it's like i'm sure you've seen some people on x or twitter and they say oh can i learn two languages at the same time but from mm -hmm. zero i think it would be tough that's like if i were to learn let's say czech or like polish and russian at the same time and i'm like at zero for both yeah yeah but if i knew russian and say like, okay i know a lot of russian five years russian i can do polish so i had that base of spanish so portuguese it was just like it was kind of like icing on the cake or something like that uh, I hope if I ever touch or if I ever, yeah, if I ever try to learn Portuguese again, then maybe it will be like that for me since my, my Spanish is a little bit higher now. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I already tried once and I quit, but it was only mostly due to time, the time. I'm like, I don't yeah. have the time to learn both. It was just a lot yeah. on my brain. Yeah, that's the biggest constraint. Yeah. So at this point, when you were, when you had this job, right, as a, as a cook and you, you know, surrounded by all these Spanish speakers and communicating with them, what would you say your level was at? Like, would you say you were fluent then or when did that, 
when did that point become? I don't think I'd be, I would say like, uh, it, it's tough to, to measure fluency. I would say, I know everybody wants to answer, when were you fluent? I would say <laughs> maybe basic and like barely basic fluency because I could talk to people that were Spanish speakers and it wasn't an issue. But then um, I think, you know, I went to community college. I went to college. Actually, my major was Spanish in college. So I think that helped it too. And then I did study abroad in Argentina. We can get to that also. Yeah. But um, I think I was fluent, but it wasn't like me speaking English. It was it was kind of like if you hear somebody from another country, like, okay, yeah, they can speak the language. They understand me. I understand them. That, mm -hmm. So I would say that type of fluency. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, you put a lot of Spanish, sin problemas, y pensar en otras cosas. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like that. How yeah. high I said that right now, I wouldn't have been able to do that at that age. I would probably maybe think a little bit or say, yo, boy, a la casa. You know, talk like that. I wasn't like where I, I am now. So Things take time, but it, it helped a lot. I will say that just to be in that environment eight hours a day and just hearing people speak Spanish. Okay, I'm really curious to know now, what were some of your your language goals? So for Portuguese and then also for Spanish, because now, you know, your Spanish is getting better and now you're starting to learn Portuguese as well. What were some of your, you know, your your goals and then also some more motivations that you had? Yeah, well, my, my first thing was go when I was a freshman in high school, I think they asked me like, oh, what do you want to do? Like when you grow up or whatever. And I said, I want to learn. I want to know nine languages because people said you can learn a language in a year. So I'm like, I just want to learn a language <laughs> in a year, every language, one language per year, which didn't end up happening, which I tried. Like you said, you quit. So what I did, I told you about the border story before that I had gone to, I think, borders and bought different courses or different CDs like. I had like a Greek CD, I had a Italian, I had a German, but I never like stuck with it. And I think that's why when I got the Portuguese, I was like, hmm, this is like similar to Spanish. I can stick with it. So those were my language goals at the beginning to know nine languages. And even now, I don't want to know nine. It's like, I, it's just, I know there's the P word that people use, the polyglot word. Like I don't consider myself that. I consider myself just a, a multilingual person, you know, because I feel like, especially now with YouTube, it's just some, it's just a community, it's a great community. I love being a part of it, but I feel like I'd rather be able to communicate with someone on a level like I'm communicating with you now, but we can do this in Spanish. We can do this in Portuguese. We can do this in French, where you're really understanding the person, like the intricacies, the ins and the outs. So, so yeah. Um, so what was the main question? I forgot again. Yeah. So just, wait, what were some of your yeah, main goals and motivations for continuing to learn Portuguese? A main goal, I, I think to just, to just go to a country and just speak the language. Um, here in Chicago, my, my, my team was uh, the Chicago Cubs and uh, Sammy Sosa. I, I, I based my Spanish off of him. So even though mm -hmm. I don't I don't I don't claim to speak Dominican Spanish at all, because if, if you put a Dominican in me in the same room, you would know that he's Dominican. I'm not. I'm not. You know, I, my Spanish is more. I would say this. My Spanish is more Mexican or Argentine, depending on who I'm talking to. When I was learning Spanish, Sammy Sosa would always do interviews. He would say baseball been very good to me so i just used that sentence that he said and i would just talk like that when i would speak spanish so so i think sometimes i may sound like that when i'm speaking spanish but and some people say some mexican people say oh you're dominican and i and i at one time i did lie when i was a freshman in high school so yeah i'm dominican but then i said nah, I'm not gonna lie. i'll just i'm american you know but yeah so it's those, yeah it's one of those things you don't want to sound cool. like yeah i'm, I'm dominican you know and, and especially when you're younger you know you want to try to fit in with certain crowds and stuff like that but now I'm just like, yeah, I'm American. I speak Spanish, I speak Portuguese. It's not a not an issue. But yeah, I mean, so the goals were just just to just to be able to speak it, just to be able to go to different countries. And I think one of the goals when I was younger was to be able to make more money, because you hear that when you're growing up. Oh, if you learn a language, you'll be able to speak, um, or you'll be able to make a lot of money at a company. Company, and then I didn't want to be like robbed if I go to another country and not know what people are talking about. That was my other goal. <laughs> yeah. And did you feel like your your personality and your identity was changing a little bit? Kind of since we, now we touched on like Dominican Spanish and Argentine Spanish, Mexican Spanish. I don't. So the funny thing about that is I don't feel my personality has changed at all or my how I speak English. But wow. I did um two interviews maybe two months ago. I was I did two interviews in Portuguese and uh, then I went to get my hair cut. And the girl that got and the girl that cut my hair, she was like. And I said, yeah, I speak Spanish and Portuguese. She's like, oh, I can hear it. I'm like, what? I'm like, so I think a lot of times when you get so good at a language, your native language, your native accent does change a little bit just because it is part of who you are. But I don't feel my personality has changed because, I, like I said, I started at 12 years old. So this is just who I am. But I, I feel see. like since I speak so well, 
that my English may have like an accent, a certain accent. And even at my apartment complex, one of the ladies, she said, oh, uh, where, so where are you from? And then my name being Ajami, obviously, it's a little unique name. Where are you from? I said, oh, I'm from sh- Chicago. She's like, oh, and then I get into Spanish. Where are your parents from? Oh, Chicago. So, but to get it in English is like, it's, it's kind of weird to get it to, in English. It's like, this is my first language. I'm, I'm not lying about that. Yeah. You know, but, they, but people that hear certain accents, American accents may not, they may hear something different, but I'm not mm-hmm. aware of, you know, it's just not, it's not a conscious thing. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I can definitely, yeah, I can, I can probably see that since you've been so immersed into, you know, like both of those languages as, you know, since such such a young age, it probably does come out a lot and you don't even, you know, realize right. it because you've been doing it for such a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. Okay, so how how about like your accents in general? So with Portuguese and then also with Spanish, I mean, you touched on it a little bit already, but do you feel like you... Do you feel like you speak with a particular accent right now? Um, as of right now, in Spanish, when I'm being in Chicago, there's a lot of, uh, like I said, a lot of people from Mexico. I feel I have to make my accent more Mexican just to be understood. Um, but if I'm, let's just say if I'm just like super relaxed, like if you just said just talk Spanish, I think my accent would come out more Argentine with some Mexican. But my first day in Argentina, not my first day, but when I was in Argentina, one of the teachers said, oh, you sound very Mexican. And obviously, because we live in the United States, there's more people from Mexico. Mm-hmm. And and I knew that. But then after being in Argentina, what happens is, like I said, with the people from different countries, you see in Buenos Aires, there's people from Asia who own grocery stores. So you're talking to the Chinese person, they're saying, do peso. And you're, saying, and you're talking to them in Spanish. And then you see other people from like Senegal, you have to talk to them in Spanish. And, you, then, and then there's other South Americans that live there. So I'm, I'm in a security guard at my college. And he was from Peru, but he, he was, I thought he was from Argentina. He said, oh, well, you know, I have to change my accent because they look, you know, they look down on me if I don't speak with the Argentine accent here. So he had to change his, so every, so you, so basically I feel like I have a mix, but more so toward Mexican, it can change between Mexican and Argentine, depending on who I'm speaking with. But um, I would say that, so I wouldn't claim Dominican, even though I've, I, I know, I know the Dominican and I was learning, I was, I've watched a lot of Panamanian TV too, but um, I would say Mexican and Argentine more so than anything those are my two top accents even though i can do the spain i can mimic the Spa- spanish accent like a general but i would say mexican and argentine would be the top two accents that i'm familiar with okay and did you find it difficult to develop those accents uh not really i think mexico just because when you're here when you when you're here in the united states you, you just hear it more. that's this is this is like the first accent that you hear so you just oh yo 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 soy ajami yo soy de los estados Unidos. it's just regular but then when when I have my friend from Argentina and how he would talk, it's just like, okay, I'll pick that up. And I think that was one of my reasons to want to go to check it out and to see how it is, how it was over there. And you just get used to it because I remember being in the class where there was a class, maybe 30 of us and everybody there, like all the foreigners and everyone we talked with the Argentine accent, but there's this one girl that talked with like a Spanish accent and you could tell she's from the United States, but she wanted to keep her Spanish accent from Spain, but everybody else it's just, you just get used to it. I was there for five months. So you just get used to it. And you just talk, talk, talk like that. So I think that's like in the back of my head, like just, you know, so, so yeah. Let's talk a little bit about your your Argentine trip then. So, yeah, I guess, yeah. Why did you choose that particular trip? I don't know if that was like a part of the class. And then as well, were you still learning Portuguese at the same time? Yeah. So when I was in, uh, I went to the University of Arizona uh, for college, but then um, I didn't finish over there. I finished at Northeastern Illinois in Chicago. But uh, at my time at the University of Arizona, my major was Spanish, but my concentration was Portuguese. So you can do a major in Spanish concentration in literature or concentration in interpretation or teaching. But I say, you know what, since I like Portuguese, I'm going to do Portuguese. So that meant half of my class, I would take Spanish, half of the class, I would take Portuguese. So I was taking college level Portuguese classes. So I think that's why my Portuguese got better. And all the teachers were from Brazil. Um, As far as the Argentine acts, uh, the trip, it was, um, I think it was, it was, it was a study abroad trip. So five months, I could either go to Mexico, Spain, Costa Rica, Argentina. And I'm like, I already went to Spain. I went to Mexico for spring break. So, and then I live in the United States. It's very close to Mexico, Costa Rica. I'm not anti Costa Rica, but I think Argentina would be good because I know it's so different, the language that mm-hmm. I felt I would be 
it would challenge me the most with fluency because people, a lot of pe people talk about it so much. Oh, they talk so different and it sounds like Italian and this and the other. So I thought, it, I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to go and live life from their perspectives. And I don't know if you've heard people say, oh, los argentinos son se creen creídos. You know, they think they're better than other people, but it's like, that may be an outsider's opinion, but when you're there, people are just living their normal life. It's like, if you go to a big city, people are just doing their normal thing. People aren't thinking that they're better than you or worse than you. People have to live. People have to work. People have to go to school. So I think it may be an outsider's opinion. So I don't want to get the insider's opinion to see how it was. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, I've heard that about Spaniards a lot as well, too. I've yeah. really heard that about Argentina. Though I honestly, I don't know like anything about Argent uh, Argentina, apart from the like, me chamo. But yeah, yeah, she yeah she definitely. Chamo. <laughs> I haven't got that down yet, but I definitely heard that about Spain too, like people from mm -hmm. Spain. Okay, so tell me more about this this uh, five month immersion experience in Argentina. How how was it? What did you learn? What did you yeah. find challenging? Well, I would say the first day that I was there, I was I already knew, so at that time. If you want to say how fluent I was, I was already fluent in the language where I could say I could communicate because I remember I was ordering pizza and I was talking to someone about someone. And I said, oh, this is my first day in Argentina. And she was like shocked. She's like, this is your first day in Argentina and you already speak Spanish? I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, can't people learn before they get to a country? <laughs> you don't have to learn while you're in the country. So she was so shocked. So I said, yeah. So I um, got the pizza and everything. And then the classes, I think I took four classes, um, tango. There was a Spanish class I took. Um, there was uh, art. And I took um, the best class that we took was the uh, cultura, the culture class. Um, and then, so we had to like write papers and stuff in Spanish and all the classwork was in Spanish. Teacher spoke Spanish. Then I was living in an apartment with some other, um, some, uh, some other Argentines. And um, I had a roommate who was, he was half Brazilian, half Paraguay. So I talked to him in Spanish. So I talked to everyone. So we talked to, so I was able to talk to my roommates in Spanish a lot and, you know, use, use both language, use both languages. Obviously you use English because at the school, most of the foreigners are from the United States, but in, still in the school, it's an Argentine university. So you're mm -hmm. going to be around Argentines and other um, Latinos. But besides that, if you're not talking with the other Americans, everything's going to be in Spanish. You see street signs in Spanish. So, for example, even they have like like Monroe is an avenue, like James Monroe, but they pronounce it Monroy. So you have to say, you have to like change your mind. You can't just say, oh, la, 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 calle, Monroe, la calle Monroe. You got to say la calle Monroy. Stuff like that. Okay. So it was a good experience just to be in a different city and see different things and just experience how people live in a, in a in another country and just hear the language every day. And even one of my roommates got so mad at me, like mad because I was watching. So I'm not from Chile, right? But I was watching TV Chile because they had Chile TV. And so I was watching it because, you know, I'm from the United States. And she's like, why are you watching Chilean TV? We're in Argentina. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> But yeah, so, but, but no, my roommates were cool and um, the experience was a good experience just to speak the language. And I think in that experience, I was already fluent, but I think it like cemented my fluency because, you know, you wake up, you hear Spanish, you go to sleep, you hear Spanish, you talk to people from here in Spanish, people from there. And then I, even toward the end of my trip, I was getting so much, so much better where I, I remember listening to, to TV, right? And I'm like, I know these people aren't from Buenos Aires, it's just how they talk. So I watched it and they were from a different city. And even I went to a store and I talked to these two ladies and I'm like, you're not from Buenos Aires, are you? They're like, no, we're from here, we're from there. I'm like, okay, I could tell because I had been there such a long time that you can just pick up a different, slightly different accent, which wow. you wouldn't be able to pick up if you're not, haven't lived there. And that was only five months. Wow. Okay, I'm very ignorant when it, when it comes to that as well. I had no idea that there are more than one accent in, in Argentina. Oh yeah, there's a lot. And the funny part about it, have you heard of Tierra de Fuego? So that's like the, the most southern tip of Argentina, right by, you know, by Antarctica, Tierra de Fuego. It's funny, uh, Fireland, Tierra de Fuego. So I had a roommate from there, but her accent, she, she sounded like she was from Mexico, actually. It was weird. It was weird. But she used the shove, but she, she still like the way she, she spoke. If you didn't know, you would think she's from Mexico. And then the people mm -hmm. from the north, like Salta, they have like a different accent, culture like Bolivia, Paraguay. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot, there's a lot of accents. There's the, there's the Tierra de Fuego, there's Buenos Aires, there's Salta, and then I think there's a like Cordoba, and then there's some other ones too. So oh. yeah, so there, there's, there's a few, there's a few in there, just like there's a few in Mexico, a few in Argentina, but yeah, so the, mm -hmm. I think the longer you're there, the more you'll, you'll pick it up. Oh yeah. Do you know, or I guess, did you talk to any Argentinians or, Arge I don't know how I say, it. is it Argentines or Argentinian? Argentinian? Yeah, yeah. So it should be Argentines. Yeah. Argentines. Okay. A lot uh, of people say Argentinians. Okay. So. I definitely have heard that many times. <laughs>
But so some of the Argentines that you talk to, would they say like, oh, I can't understand, you know, this Argentine from, you know, the north, north part of the country or the southern part of the country? Like, was it, you know, that different? Uh, no, it was it, it was similar because, uh, like I said previously, they have in Buenos Aires, there's immigrants from other Spanish speaking countries, too. So there's Mexican people, there's Colombians, there's Peruvians, there's Chileans, there's Uruguayans. So so you have so in Buenos Aires, we have people from this is the funny part about it. you have Buenos Aires people from there. People from Buenos Aires, the city. You have people from other parts of Argentina. You have people from other Spanish speaking countries. Then you have people from non Spanish speaking countries. So you have all these people speaking Spanish. So I don't think anybody thought it was tough to understand them at all. They just just went with the flow, I guess. You know, it's just like they know they know the, the common accent is the Buenos Aires accent, but no, it wasn't tough. It's just it, it was just fun. Like I said, with the Chinese guy, he said do do peso, and it was just unique because his his Spanish was obviously limited because he's working working in commerce. But um, but yeah, so. So it, it was a good experience. It was a good experience just to be around the language every day. And another unique thing on TV, they would show, this is before Netflix. So they would watch TV and they would have, so two things. One thing, if something was from the United States, it would be subtitled in Spanish. And they, since they were reading it, they would keep it on the lowest volume. And I'm like, I can't even hear what they're talking about because it's in English. So I'm like, I want to hear it. They keep it on the lowest volume because they're just reading it. I'm like, okay. And then the other thing is when things are dubbed, it's not dubbed into Argentine Spanish. It's dubbed into that neutral Spanish, which I'm sure you've heard of. So okay, there's a yeah. movie. Argentines are very used to the neutral Spanish because they hear it in movies. Did you ever experience culture shock being in Argentina, Mexico, and Spain? I don't know if you've been in any other Spanish-speaking countries. Um, those are the only three Spanish-speaking countries I've been to um, as of so far. I do want to visit Panama. Um, that's probably in the future, maybe a year or two. Um, culture shock. I would say the first one was Mex uh, not Mexico. Um, Spain. Just when, like when I previously told you about the the girl in the ice cream store and the guy that was living there um, from Guanajuatorial. Um, Argentina. The only culture shock thing was to me. It was kind of like I felt like I was living in the 1980s. Just like when I went to the uh, dance clubs. You know how people dance in the United States, very close and stuff. Over there, it's very different. Like especially like the hair, the guys with their hairstyles and the girls. It's weird. The culture shock is weird because so I have my roommates. I have maybe eight roommates and they would have friends come in the apartment and you would always greet each other, you know, with a kiss and beso. And obviously, you know, Americans will do shake hand or hug. So that yeah. was like a weird thing to get used to. And even sometimes <laughs> if, if there's a guy, sometimes the guys don't do it. Like just just as friends, it's not a big deal. And they would do it with me. And I'm like, oh, I'm from the United States. You know, I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to be mean, but like this little nostalgia is we don't do that. And so but so 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 yeah, so I think that was the biggest culture shock, like with the, the kissing thing. And then I remember one of my roommates was like, Oh, you know, I wish we were like you guys where we just did hugs, you know, instead of doing kisses. I'm like, Yeah, every country's different. And you can't really get around it because I'm not saying you can't get around it, but it's just you're immersed in the culture. That's just what everyone does. They just oh come on, stop. Like even if they didn't know me, oh, this is a and then my name's Ajami, but over there's Ashami. So, oh, this is Ashami, and then do the kiss and just say hi, and it's nothing. It's just friendly. That's just how they are. So yeah. So I would say that was the culture shock. And when when would you say your you were you became fluent in Portuguese? And then also I haven't asked you yet, but what is your definition of fluency? I like to ask people that. I kind of know a lot of people have their different cool. definitions. Cool. 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 Yeah, uh, fluent in Portuguese. <laughs> I never. I never. <laughs> Okay, so I talk about it in my book um, that I have my book, Bilingual Secrets. You guys can check it out, Amazon ebook, paperback, bilingualsecrets.com. Anyways, I, the story I talk about in there was when, so when I was in Arizona, I have a friend, he's from Angola, and we were talking Portuguese sometimes, right? So we went to a, we're going to a, like a club in, in Tucson, and he says, oh, I'm going to pick up my friend, his female friend from, she's from Angola too, so lives in Tucson. So she gets in a car. And she starts talking in Portuguese and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know what? We'll just talk in Portuguese. Cause sometimes my friends will talk in English. Sometimes we'll talk in Portuguese. So I'm like, we'll just talk in Portuguese. So we'll talk in Portuguese. So <clears throat> excuse me. She asked me, where are you from? I said, oh, I'm from Chicago. So where are you from? Oh, I'm going, okay, cool. So we go to the club and now this lady, she's, she speaks perfect Spanish too. She sounds like a Cuban when she speaks Spanish. So she speaks Spanish and Portuguese and English. Well, I don't know if she speaks English. So Spanish and Portuguese. So we go to the club, have a good time. So fast forward to the end of the night. I see this girl that I'm interested in. I go up to her and say, hey, how's it going? My name is Ajami, blah, blah, blah. Can I get your number? The Angolan girl from the car, she yells out to the girl, don't talk to him. He lies about where he's from. And the girl that I was talking to said, is that true? Do you lie about where you're from? I'm like, no, she just said that because I was talking to her in Portuguese. 
She's like, yeah, he lied about where you're from. Now, and like I said in the book, I don't remember if I got the girl's number or not, but to get a native speaker to really think that I was from her country, I was just say that's fluent to be where she think I'm lying. And I'm not lying. Like, <clears throat> why, do, why would I have to lie? And then I asked my friend about it. I said, why, do you, why does she think that? Like, I don't speak. Maybe now I speak more Angolan Portuguese because I'm more into it. But at the time, I'm like, I know I didn't. And she's like, and my friend just said, yeah, because some people do speak. It was, it was just a weird, it was a weird situation. So that's, so to, to answer your question, I think fluency is when you can just speak it without thinking about it. You just say whatever comes to your mind or you hear somebody speaking it, <coughs> excuse me. And it's just like normal conversation. But that was, okay. one, of the, that was one of the moments that I had. Um, so that's when I think I got, well, it was good at Portuguese, but at that time, so what I was doing to get good at that time, again, was immersion. What I would do is I would watch, um, there's this Portuguese channel called rtp.pt.com, rtp, not .com, rtp.pt. And excuse me, it's basically Portugal's um, national, it's like NBC, ABC, but of Portugal, their national television station. And so they have a show called Reporter Africa. And this show does interviews in Africa. They interview different presidents and stuff like that. So I would watch that like almost on a daily basis. And that's why I think I picked up the accent. That's why she probably thought I was from there. Those are very unique experiences right there. I've had a few kind of similar to that where some, mm-hmm. some people I've talked to here in San Antonio mm-hmm. thought that I didn't speak English. I'm just like, no, I, I do speak English. I don't know that's why would you would think that for. Yeah. And then and then she's and we're speaking Spanish, right? But then she said, uh, she said, say something in English. And then I'm still thinking Spanish. So I said, I'll go. And then we both started laughing. I'm like, she's like, I know you don't speak English. I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. But yeah, this is, that's why I love, I love uh, learning Spanish. I love, you know, language learning. Mm-hmm. Is you get to have all these experiences, you know, like the ones that you have shared. It's really mind blowing, honestly. Mm-hmm. Like you just nonstop learning. And it's amazing the amount of people that you meet, right? that speak all these different languages like you yeah. would you would never know until you actually start talking to them and you start asking like asking them you know about their their experiences you know what mm-hmm. languages do you know why do you know it you know what country you're from it's yeah. it's fascinating to me what are some of your favorite dishes from mexico spain and argentina um mexico say tortas steak tortas i like those um what is it called Me- uh, spain i really don't have any particular dish no, I don't really have a particular dish. Um, empanadas from Argentina are good. They have a lot of different types. They were doing delivery way before DoorDash and Uber. So I was in Argentina back in 07. So <coughs> they would have like, you could even get ice cream off of, like the guys in the motorcycle, you order ice cream, you go order a steak. I ordered like a steak dinner one time. And I know the peso is bad. The Argentine peso is bad now, but it was, it was like better. It was good for us Americans back then. So say empanadas, you can order like 12 empanadas for maybe 12 pesos. So that's like $4 at the time. What? Well, yeah. What made you want to start learning French? As far as the French language goes, I've always, I don't know if you remember the Montreal Expos baseball team. No. <laughs> well, I don't so, watch baseball at all. You watch baseball? Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> so, there's a team called the Washington Nationals. They used to be located in Montreal called the Montreal Expos. And in Montreal, they speak French and, uh, I've had the opportunity to go there twice. That's the flag of Quebec for the people that okay. don't know. And for me, I like Quebec so much. It's so diverse. It's basically if you go to Chicago, but everything is in French. Or if you go to New York, but everything is in French. And that's the that's like I love it so much. And it's like a lot of people wouldn't think French, I think France, obviously. But from the United States, that's jet lag. That's a lot of money. That's euros conversion. Mm-hmm. If you go to Quebec, less not no jet lag. Only a couple hour time difference depending where you're coming from. And the last time I went, I really I spoke French maybe three three phrases the whole time I was there. And a unique thing about that, they have I actually was in a, like a Spanish speaking neighborhood. Like I heard people speaking Spanish. I actually spoke Spanish at a Peruvian restaurant there. And when I was staying, this was before Airbnb, the apartment I was staying, the guy that was staying downstairs, I talked to him in English first because that's what I was doing, just talking to people in English because a lot of people know English there. And he answered me in French. He said, oh, can you speak to me in French, please? I said, okay. Then I asked him in French. I said, where are you from? He said, Cuba. I'm like, okay. I'm like, you want to speak Spanish? I'm like, yeah, let's speak Spanish. So I just like the fact that you can go there and speak the French language. But then the people, like the young people around our age, their English is like flawless, where their English is so good. 
I would say this is fluency. Their English is so good where they don't even have a French accent. Wow. <coughs> Excuse me. Where you wouldn't even think they spoke French. That's how good their English is. Like the English is so good, you would think they're from San Antonio or Chicago, Minneapolis, wherever. So that's where I want to get my like language skills, my, you know, keep my Spanish up there, get my Portuguese up there, get my French up there to where it's so good. You just think I'm from that place. Same here. But I have no idea how long it's going to take. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to say, start today. You'll get there tomorrow. <laughs> I like that. That's good. And what are some of your favorite resources to learn languages? with? I would say the best one is uh, YouTube. I always talk about YouTube and Spotify. I have like uh, videos on my YouTube channel. Um, bilingual Secrets, as you see, Bilingual Secrets YouTube channel. Um, so, for example, for my YouTube, <clears throat> I've been learning French for like the last five years now seriously but meaning like i don't really, i don't do anything with spanish at all like i have maybe one friend that i'll text in spanish and that's about it that's that's all that i do to keep my spanish up oh wow so basically what my days is basically 70 to 80 percent french and the rest portuguese really yeah yeah so i do a lot of french and so with that being said a couple years ago i decided to just follow all these youtubers in french from either france or from canada so you just use YouTube and just watch them because they, I don't think YouTube does it anymore. But if you were to subscribe to a YouTuber, they would recommend you like 10 or other 10 other YouTubers that are in that similar genre. So when I was I was subscribed and it recommended me like 10 other ones that were French speaking. So I just kept subscribing, subscribing, subscribing. And then you'll watch someone you're not interested but then some of them you will be interested. So I think YouTube is a big thing. Um, and then Spotify, because you get to listen to podcasts, radio uh, not radio, but um, music. So, so yeah. So those are the biggest things that I I would think that more than apps. I don't know how you feel about apps, but um, we know the famous one that's out there that I won't mention. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> people love to talk about it. But um, you have I something think, against it? <laughs> no. Well, um, the thing about it is, as you know, I started learning languages at twelve years old, a long time ago. So I, yeah. I've known about that app. I've known about all these, not all, but at least that one for a long time ago. So if I was on a streak, my streak would probably be like three thousand. But I just don't keep up with it because I see. Yeah, I, I, I finished the Spanish maybe in like two days. And so I'm like, OK. And then it would just the dog is on the chair. I mean, who's going to say that on a daily basis? Yeah. Well, if you're watching YouTube, you get to listen to YouTubers and stuff and you get to listen to them and watch news, radio. And that's what I those, that's what I would suggest for anyone. Okay, that makes sense. And also, I'm going to need some of those French resources. I don't really have it. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, no problem. I'll send you send you over some. Cool. And what would be some some of your biggest tips for new language learners that would like to learn a language and they have no idea what they're doing, where to start, what should they do? Or what, what are some of your recommendations? Besides going to my YouTube channel, read my book, um, the biggest recommendation um would be to just when I say with YouTube, like let's say you're interested in let's say you're interested in Mexican food. So just type in, go to Google, type in Mexican food, then you'll see Comida de Mexico. Type that into YouTube, Comida de Mexico or Comida Mexicana or whatever, or Mexican, let's just make it easier, Spanish news, Mexican news. Type that in and you'll see that. And then once you see that, <coughs> excuse me, once you see that, it will help you to want to learn that language, you know? And you have to find something that you like. If you like interviews, if you like politics, if you like sports, think about all the stuff that's in English that we, I don't know if you have direct TV or what, what do you have for like cable or satellite? But think about it, we have all these channels that are in English and they all range from a very various different things. So imagine all those things can be found in different languages too, from Spanish to French to Portuguese to whatever language. On YouTube, there's YouTube channels that have maybe, <clears throat> like I'm watching TPA Angola right now. I know it's on mute so you can't hear it, but it has 70 million views. It's, it's the Angola's national TV channel. It has 70 million views and they have maybe thousands of videos. So you can take one channel has thousands of videos and you'll just be good to go <laughs> so mm -hmm. don't try to do a lot at one time and i think the biggest thing that i would say to end it um with regard to fluency don't look at it as we hear this question a lot in the community how long will i learn spanish how long will it take to learn french don't look at it like that look at it look at it as a in the long run like hey if you really want to be committed it's going to take a while you know but i would say three months basic fluency not basic fluency but basic understanding so and um, how can the viewers who'll be watching this video get in contact with you, learn more about you and what you do and more about your journey? Yeah. So um, I have a course at AJ, um, ajtutor.com. It's a course in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. If students want to get motivated, 
um, and the course is in three languages, English, Spanish, Portuguese. Um, they want to contact me for English, Spanish, or Portuguese lessons, Bilingual Secrets at yahoo.com. Um, visit me at my YouTube channel, Bilingual Secrets. Check out the book, bilingualsecrets.com. And um, I'll be happy to help them out. And I am on uh, X, uh, my name is Jami Winfrey. I'll definitely link down that contact information below in the, in the description box of the video. So yeah, everybody can get more, get in contact with you and learn more about you. So, you know, you have a lot to share. Yes. Thanks a lot, Joshua. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you very much for sharing your journey today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye.